Hey, what's up, guys? I figured I'd do a little video for you, just show you some of the some of the tomato work that's coming out. Quite a few tomatoes are coming out this year. A little bit more than I expected. I, I didn't expect my harvests to be so large this year. Might have something to do with the rain. But I'll show you a couple of plants and some of what's going on, some of the dwarf varieties that I got going, and what I'm going through with that. I'll show you how I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm doing my seeds. And uh, let's just show you some of the tomatoes. I mean. Guys, this is absolutely ridiculous. I'm. Uh, this is th what you're looking at here. I'm trying to make sure you're zoomed out here. Um, you're looking at here. This is literally every two days. Every two days, I have this much in tomatoes. It's almost more than I can possibly handle. It, it, as far as like trying to do videos and saving the seed, and it's just getting to be a lot. I may have to skip quite a few few of these videos. Of course, you know we're going to process and get seed. But I, I can't do the videos and and uh, you know and do reviews. It's just not. It's just is ridiculous, guys. I, I mean, my time is literally consumed every day just processing tomatoes every single day. I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even messing around with peppers this year. I mean, I got like a hundred varieties of peppers growing. I'm like not even messing with them. I don't even want to look at those right now because of what I'm going through with the tomatoes. It's just. It's more than I can. I mean, there's my seed jars that I do my fermenting in, there's probably about 50 jars here. That's every two days those jars are, are getting, not filled to the top, but they're processing a plate worth of seed at a shot. So every time I get a certain amount of uh, tomatoes, I have to take them off the plant and process them. I can only leave them on the table for so long because then the fruit flies are getting get them. So I have to process this really, really quickly. And the main reason why I have to start pulling these tomatoes off the plants and not just leave them on the plants is because of the rain. And the rain's coming. You can see what it's doing. It's splitting all my tomatoes. These are prized tomatoes here, guys. You know, these are my absolute prize varieties of tomatoes. And the rain is just absolutely devastating me this year. With, with, it's just between the rain bringing down the blight and just... You know, splitting tomatoes. I mean, it's splitting. My tomatoes are splitting in half all over the place. And as soon as they split, the fruit flies come in. And it's basically, if you're not fast enough, you can't even get the seed out of them. So if I can see them split, then I try to get them and get the seed out of them right away. If not, what am I going to do? You know. But I mean, this is ridiculous, guys. Look at this. This is this is these were picked clean yesterday, right? Now look at this. The tomatoes on this thing. Again, I have to pick these again. I don't even have room on the table to pick these. He's got to sit here until they make room. I just don't have the room for them. I mean, same thing with these. These were all picked yesterday. Now, these are determinate varieties. So what they do is, it, if, you're, if you're, I'm not that used to growing determinate varieties. So normally with determinates, you want to, you want to do what's known as succession planting. So you do, uh, you start your seeds at one month, say beginning April, and then... In uh, May, you start your you start growing seeds again for another twenty or thirty varieties of uh, determinate varieties. You start you know, and then a third month from now, uh, you start your 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 fourth or your third um, seed starts of determinate varieties. So you have to do it in like stages of three. And if you do that, you you'll get uh, you know you'll get a um, you'll get an early harvest, a mid season mid season harvest, and then a late season harvest. And if you do it right, you, it's pretty good. You get a, you, I mean, you got tomatoes nonstop all year. But I grow the indeterminate and determinate. So I've got tomatoes up the wazoo here. And like I said, I'm picking these every single day, guys. Every day to every two days. I mean, this plant here I just stripped down because I'm going to second crop this. I don't know why I want to second crop anything. Because, again, I got more tomatoes than I know what to do with. But I do it anyway. And so what I do when I second crop it, I did a video about it. I basically strip the plants down and I cut them down low and then uh, you know I get all the tomatoes off the plant and once I do that then I second crop it and then the plant goes into a secondary cycle. Now these are dwarfs which aren't quite considered determinate. They might even fall into the semi-determinate. I don't know. But they're not the same thing. And so because of that reason you can do that and then you end up with a second uh, crop that comes up. And oftentimes, if it's not diseased or it gets diseased from the blight that gets into the leaf and then into the stem and kills it, if that doesn't happen and the, and the plant stays alive, if, if you get it before that happens, the plant will throw up more shoots and then you'll get a 
second harvest or even a third harvest depending on your location of course so this is already a plant for example that's been harvested early took it down early it took all the tomatoes off it and here we go we're already starting to see the uh, second i should get a pretty good harvest off of this one because it's been done early enough these here i probably won't get a harvest off them well i mean i'll get a small second harvest and again i can bring these in the garage if we get a frost night i can just pull them in but yeah i just wanted to show you the tomatoes that are coming off here i mean look at this there's more these are these are just starting to turn now Th these are absolutely ridiculous guys the, these plants are so loaded with tomatoes i mean they're literally splitting the plants in half i have to change my approach when they're growing these dwarf varieties of tomatoes most of what you're looking at here are dwarfs and they're from the dwarf tomato project so these are these got some very unique genetics to them you have to read the whole history about the dwarf tomato project and everything but these plants are, are their their genetics on these plants are very unusual to me they, they just don't they're, they're extremely vibrant varieties that i'm not really used to i mean they're, they're generally blight and disease resistant I mean, the, the growth on these things is absolutely like unlike anything I'm used to. I'm used to growing indeterminates, and because of that reason, I'm just not used to this level of production for such a tiny little plant. I mean, it's just unbelievable how much these plants put out. And anybody who's getting into tomatoes, like you're going to start growing your own gardening and your own tomatoes, this is something I would definitely recommend you start off with. Start with these micro dwarf, these uh, regular dwarf varieties, especially from the Dwarf Tomato Project, because of the genetics they use to create these varieties. And they're, they're pretty incredibly unbelievable, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm pretty impressed with them. But wanted to show you what's going on with them so these are the, they're basically determinants and what happens with determinants is once they set their fruit like this one fell over and knocked all the tomatoes off my plant i don't know what knocked it over but this plant was so loaded with tomatoes it may have just fell over i don't know it was just absolutely ridiculously loaded with tomatoes and um it fell over but this is generally with with these dwarf varieties or determinant varieties you're going to see what happens is once a plant gets to a certain stage and it sets all its fruit, even before the fruit ripens, the plants begin to start to yellow off and are dying. It looks like it's fall for it right now. It's not. It's, we're still in summer. It's like not even the end of July here, and my plants look like this. This is ridiculous, right? Well, no, that's just the way these plants go. That's why you got a succession plant with these. This is what they do. All my regular indeterminates in the back don't look anything like this. This is this is what determinate and or dwarf varieties uh, do and so when they get to the stage even before the fruit is fully ripened they start dying back there's a very fine line between um you know there's just there's just a fine line between trying to second crop this and it dying completely you need to get to this before it, the plant starts to die completely it's like you can see the tops on here still look healthy and vibrant they're still putting out tomatoes well eating the, it, they're putting out flowers it, they're not going to develop into tomatoes you're better off taking it down the only thing that i'm kind of waiting on is for some of these fruits to start to turn once they start to turn on the plant that's when i decide to take it down and basically what i do is i just take it down yeah you know, i bring it down to here and i'm just like cut it down you see all these lower shoots that are coming up you want to get to those before this plant starts to get like almost fully beyond the point of no return you need to get to that before that point if you do that these will begin to develop they'll turn into stems and then you'll get a second harvest from it but you need you need to do that by at least the first week of august if you're not done by the first week of august don't waste your time because you need at least two to three months it's just like starting it from seed almost except it's it's coming off of an established uh, root system so it develops even quicker and set fruit even faster and they and the fruits will develop quite quite quickly so you can see you know the leaves are coming off and everything but yeah i just wanted to share my tomato a little tomato ordeal here uh here's a painted lady and uh this plant's not a determinate variety but i don't i'm kind of under the suspicion that it is a determinant variety just by the nature of what it did i mean this is basically dying out uh just like a determinant variety it's not because of disease there's nothing wrong with the plant it's just 
turning yellow and then fading away, just like a determinate variety. And so I, I'm wondering if it is a determinate variety and they just, you know, on, on the original website where I got the seed from, they're just calling it an indeterminate and it's actually not. It's just a, this is a determinate variety in my opinion. It's growing like one. So what I need to do with this in a case like this, I'm gonna strip all these tomatoes off. And again, we're gonna take it down to here, leave some of these little shoot stems that are coming up, leave them there, just take it down to there, take about a week or two, and then you should start to see new growth. If it doesn't happen, then it's more than likely it's gonna die. You, you got to it too late. So you gotta, you gotta intervene at some point before everything is ready, you know what I'm saying? But yeah tons and tons of tomatoes now this is not a, a determinate variety and you can see that this plant is perfectly healthy yes it did get a little blight some of the late blight was coming in and it's trying to take this plant out man these plants are really tough boy i'll tell you they're really fighting the late blight i've never seen plants fight late blight the way i see these plants fighting it it started coming in because of the intense amount of rain but man, these, these plants really put on a fight for that. Usually when you get late blight, your plants, your crops or your plants are dead within about a week. Done, gone, goodbye. They're, all the leaves are off it and then it starts getting into the stem, gets inside the vascular system of the stem, and then it just basically kills the plant from there. Once it gets into, once it becomes systemic inside the plant, it's, it's game over. If you can get to it before it becomes systemic and you take it out of the blighted area, like in a container like this, and you pull it out, you might be able to save and then it'll come back. But these plants have been fighting like absolute crazy. Um, I've never seen anything like this. They're a very strange uh, tomato year for me. I'm not sure if anybody else is having a similar experience with this type of uh, tomato year. But it's not a pepper year, but it's definitely a tomato year. This year on tomatoes is ridiculous. And uh, so, yeah, this is the Wooly Blue Jay. I think this is a Tom Wagner creation. It's an all, totally awesome tomato. It's a wooly variety. And... Um, this is a late season variety that even though the tomatoes you see on there are on there it, they've been on there for over a month now and they're just sitting there they're getting larger but slowly and it, they're probably not going to be ready until maybe mid to late august i would imagine that's to me already a, a late season variety this, this has been growing for a while so but it's still a great variety to grow and um yeah i mean this one's ready to you can see that i already pruned it down all right, I already took that halfway down, cut it down, and now that you've seen that I prune it, you see what it uh, what it's doing. It's already putting up its second load of shoots. I may do a, a, a tertiary pruning or a secondary pruning and take off these stems as they start to die back just to make sure that it hits a point. That stem, when it, as the stem dies, it has to hit a point where it creates a knot on the inside, and it doesn't allow that dying to continue. If it keeps continuing, you've got to keep taking it off until it stops dying. You have to keep doing that because whatever's killing it, it could be maybe a little blight got in there. You got to get to it and cir circumvent it. But yeah, we, we already have uh, plants coming up, right? So we got some stuff, but look at all the tomatoes, guys. This is r r absolutely ridiculous this year. And um, I mean, as far as the outdoor garden compared to what I've been doing, you know, in the back over there, I'd say that's pretty good. The, the outdoor garden in the back, it's doing pretty good. I'm not going to say it's, uh, it, but it's nothing compared to this, guys. I mean, you're talking, I, I've got nothing but honking tomatoes. When I say honking, I mean, look at this. I mean, look at these tomatoes. These are all absolutely half pound and one pound tomatoes all over the place. I've never seen so many large tomatoes come off plants like this. I'm not used to that in my area because you can see all the trees here. Trees, trees, then you got houses, and you got houses, you got more trees. And because of this reason, I, I lose about four to six hours of solid sunrise to sunset light, direct sunlight. And because of that reason, I can't grow massively large tomatoes because of that reason. You need that 12-hour solid, full sunrise to sunset light. If you're not getting that, you're not going to get those world record-breaking tomatoes. You're just not. You need to have full sun. And the humidity's got to be right. And, um, and and the soil's got to be right, and the temperature at night's got to be right. There's a whole concophony of stuff to really get large tomatoes. But for little plants like this, the amount of tomatoes they put out is absolutely ridiculous, guys. I mean, here's the um, the fuzzy wuzzy. A lot of people go crazy for this tomato, and they've been buying this tomato off me like 
to the point where I'm, ran, I'm out of stock on it. But this is it. This is, again, this is supposed to be a determinant variety. It's also considered a dwarf. But in my opinion, from my observations and my way of observing these plants, this is not a dwarf. This is what you would refer to as a compact. The same thing with this one. This, these are compact varieties. Those are dwarf varieties. This is not a dwarf variety. This is a compact variety, in my opinion. But everybody labels it as a dwarf, and it's not. It's not a dwarf, guys. This is, this is a compact variety. It's simply uh, a, dwarf's, a dwarf variety. You can tell the difference from just the leaf shape alone, right? I don't have any more good examples here, but dwarf varieties, the sheep the leaf shape alone should tell you that it's a dwarf. This is just not a dwarf, it's a compact variety. You could tell by the, the the way these stems are. You see how it grows on the bottom? It grows like a compact. A dwarf doesn't grow like that. Dwarfs, <coughs> dwarfs grow like this. They put out these massive hunking stems that come up like that and they only get to about four feet tall and then it stops growing. And then it really concentrates on fruit set, and it's like ridiculous. You can see right here, you see how they're splitting in half, the plants? I can't even tie these things up. I mean, they're getting like 40 to 50 pounds worth of fruit on them, and they just split right in half. So I, I, these, were, these, these uh, plastic poles were good in the beginning. And, um, you know, they were working really well until we started getting to the fruit set. And now you're looking at all these tomatoes in here. I mean, these, like I said, there's probably about 20 to 30 pounds in tomatoes on these plants. And they just break everything that I put in there to try to hold the tomatoes up. I used to use sticks on the sides of my pails and then let the plants grow up that and fill up with tomatoes. The problem with that is it got too top heavy. So every time there, there was a little fart in the air, the, plant, the whole thing would fall down and my tomatoes would be all over the sidewalk and driveway. So I stopped doing that. I went with this with this hoop technique over here that I created for this, and it works well all the way up until you get about 40 or 50 pounds in tomatoes on it. Something else has, has to be uh, uh, modified to this. It still works. It's still strong. However, it needs to be modified. I may have to put a secondary hoop going the other way to support it up and down. So it may have to be a double hoop, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. Here's the uh, Cherokee Tiger Large. This is an absolutely gorgeous tomato, guys. Look at that. I love this tomato plant. I'm going to be growing this every year from now on. I'm just absolutely fascinated with it, with this particular variety. It's the one that with the leaves. You can't see it now because it's dying. But it's the one. This plant produces um, Charteroose leaves, which is very strange in color. And, um, man, look at the stem. On this plant, I'm snapping my plants. Where is it? Right here. Look at that freaking thick stem on that thing. That thing's got to be twice the size of my thumb. The the thickness on that. And then the plant, what it did was, is it only came up about I don't know six inches, and it threw all these tendrils out, like a like a bush almost. And it's a very strange thing it did. It's it's almost like a, a combination of a dwarf and a compact variety. It's just really, really strange what it did. And it put out so many tomatoes, guys. I picked most of those off. Uh, like you see here. You see this See this size here? It's about a half pound, maybe three quarters of a pound. Right? I picked off probably a dozen of these already and processed them. A dozen of them. And I still got a ton of them on here already. Oh, my God. Guys, what a year for tomatoes. Excellent year. Main thing I'm, I'm, I'm attributing to this whole... Thing is the fact that these were all dwarf varieties and my indeterminates in the back they're good but again also that's mostly late season stuff and I'm not even fooling around back there I'm picking some tomatoes but it's mostly um, late season that's all gonna come in later on this stuff came in early I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you from now on I'm gonna be doing um, may, I might even do double amount of buckets next year I'm going to spend like over $1,000 in buckets and soil to do another 40 to 50 more pails on top of what you see here. And I'm pretty much just going to concentrate this whole upper area of my my property uh, to a dwarf varieties and micro dwarfs. I grow the micro dwarfs over here. I'll show you those really quick. But these guys, they just put out a ton of tomatoes and they just pretty much shut down this year. I'm not... I'm not doing that good with second crop. And some of them are starting to second crop pretty good. But 
they're not doing it this year. Last year, I was really successful with it. This year, I don't know. It's a funny year. They just don't seem like they want to make it. When it rained and the rain came on it, that's pretty much what, what killed off my plants. In my opinion, the rain up here where I live, the rain is toxic to tomato plants. That's just my opinion. But if you could keep these out of the rain and you could prevent rain from hitting them, these plants will, you know produce triply amount of tomatoes you know it's the rain is killing it it's the rain that's poisonous in my opinion the rain the rain is not good for tomato plants at all you can see like this one died this is a micro dwarf a birdie one one i think uh one of my one of my um uh, subscribers, one of my, my, my viewers on my videos tr tr pronounced that for me. It's actually a French name. It's not Juan like Spanish. It's actually Schwan. Schwan. Wiggy Schwan. Something like that. So, that see, that one didn't make it. That one didn't make it. Here's another one I pruned. Uh, this one might still make it. I still, I, it, it looks like it's starting to die back, but I may have to do it again. Uh, it does have a little life. There is a stem coming here, but I don't see any new shoots coming off of that one. This one's still pretty good. It still has some tomatoes on the top, but I think I may have to prune this one. You can see the other three died. This is bonsai, microdwarf. You can see the other plants uh, pretty much shriveled up and died. Uh, they're done. This one's still alive, so I might be able to preserve at least one plant. Most of these all got to get trimmed down. I, I may have to pull all these tomatoes off early and really trim them down and get that growth now. Or else I'm, you know, I'm not going to get a, a secondary harvest out of these, which is what I usually depend on. Uh, being that I don't have a lot of area to grow my plants in. So and because of that reason... And when I second crop, I don't have to have double the amount of growing capacity because of succession planting. I'm doing a little differently. And so oftentimes I'm pretty successful doing that. But sometimes, you could, as you can see, they just drop dead on you. Here's my pumpkin plant. Look at this, guys. I know I'm kind of ranting all about different stuff. But while I'm here, I might as well show it to you. See, this is my pumpkin. I got some big pumpkins coming in back here, man. There's some big ones back here. They're rolling down. There's like a hill thing here. Somewhere you can't see it in there, but there's a big one. This, this is, I think, this variety of pumpkin is called jack o' lantern pumpkin. And uh, man, this thing's huge, man. Look at this thing. Look at this. No vine borers so far this year. Uh, at least I don't think I have vine borers. So I'm really, really lucky. I've been growing pumpkins for the last 15 years. Every single year that I've been growing pumpkins, I've always had a problem with vine borers, right? And they always destroy your plants before they could fully get a good crop out of them so far i'm doing really good this year no vine borers usually when you got vine borers all these leaves will be wilted down and when the sun comes out and when you see that you got to start hunting the stem down all the way down until you can find the entryway where the vine borer came in and then you could split that open with your knife and then pull that little maggot out of there and feed that to your chickens if you got them. I used to feed them to my chickens all the time. My chickens love those vine borers because they're like big fat grubs like that, right? But uh, so far, they're not wilting in the sun. And uh, the leaves are just really gorgeous. No powdery mildew yet. No downy mildew. So fingers are crossed on that. But yeah, I got a number of pumpkins coming out of this thing. I'm not sure if you can see that. I can't see what's in the camera. But there's one there. We got a couple over here. This is all for one plant, guys. You believe this thing? This thing came all the way down, went all the way up my driveway like this. I finally had to pick the thing up because I was moving it over to the side. But now I picked it up and I'm wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. Uh, that's not a word, right? Wrapping or wrapping, wrapping it around this way, and then uh, just let it kind of grow into the weeds, I guess. I don't know. It's mid-season, so I don't, I don't know how much bigger this plant's going to get. And then over here, there's another um, sugar pumpkin growing. So I'm hoping to get some sugar pumpkins this year. might do a video on how I uh, make pumpkin pie with the sugar pumpkins. It's actually not really hard at all. It's pretty easy. Um, but I like to use the sugar pumpkin because it's a little sweeter and you use less sugar. So you got the natural fructose of the pumpkin to really help you along. But, yeah, you still got to add sugar to sugar pumpkins. It's not that sweet, guys. A lot of people think, oh, I got sugar pumpkins. I'm going to I'm gonna make my um, I'm gonna make my uh, pumpkin pie with just sugar pumpkins. I don't need sugar. No, you need sugar. You have to put sugar in it. It's just, it's not that sweet. 
Um, a lot of my plants, I know I'm ranting again, but my piper plants really took a beating this year, guys. I have a really serious problem with, um, with aphids this year. And what happened was, is the aphids throughout the years, I bring my plants indoors and I bring them out, obviously, every year. I get two, three, four year growth out of my plants. Uh, unfortunately, what ended up happening was, it's a little weird and I never knew this could happen, but apparently it did. The aphids that survived through the winter, because it would have aphids in the winter, I'd be spraying them and spraying them, and nothing seems to be work, but I keep the population under control. This is indoors, right? And when I bring them outdoors, I put them outside and in a greenhouse, and they would kind of die off and then wither away. And you might see a little bit here, a little bit there, but they normally die. This year, it's not what happened. This year, the aphids are literally, they, they, they biologically went from an insect to a disease. And, and literally, it, they're as bad as a bacterial or viral disease. That's how bad they are. You spray them with water, they split and become two. That's basically what's happening. And the, the aphid problem got so bad here that I literally cannot leave my plants under any kind. It has to be exposed to direct sunlight and let all the natural native critters that eat aphids get in there and start doing their thing. I can't keep this in a greenhouse anymore. I may not be able to grow peppers in my greenhouse for a couple of years because of this problem. Until these aphids, these are these aphids are what I refer to as super aphids. And what happens apparently is these aphids will adapt to an indoor environment and they'll grow to a, I don't know, a plague type of, um, they, be, they become a plague is what happens when you grow them indoors. And so you have to break that cycle and kill them super aphids off by simply not bringing your plants in, in, in indoors anymore because there's no way to control them there's no i've used every chemical you could think of to try to kill these aphids then you'll these plants will be covered in aphids i'll wash them off with a hose i'll stand and i spray them with neem oil and i spray them with the pyrethian and i spray them with this and i do that with the soap and the water and to kill everything everything looks good there's no nothing on the plant two days later it's completely infested again and this is every single day i'm literally got to a point where i spraying my plants every single day it you would kill it kills the aphids that are on contact maybe 10 million i kill right in one spray then the next day there's another 10 million all over again all over the plants sucking my plants dry literally next day or the day, day after every two days there's 10 million more new ones it, they're they're breeding like a disease that this is a completely abnormal behavior for an aphid it shouldn't be doing this and this is because i was bringing my plants and i created what's known as probably super aphids and once that happens, the only way to actually get rid of, or rid of it or remediate the problem is to stop bringing my plants indoors. And that means I may have to stop growing peppers for two or three years because it is super aphid problem. And I don't know what else to do. I can't, there's no chemicals that kill it. The chemicals kill them, yes, but they come right back. There's no getting rid of them. There's no exterminating them. There's no remediation. I've done everything you could think of and I'm, I pulled all my plants. You might be able to see it here. You see all my pepper plants? I pulled them all out of the greenhouse. I pulled everything out of the greenhouses. I'm, I'm not gonna grow. Now, tomatoes I don't have a problem with. These aphids specifically attack pepper plants. So, they're not attacking tomatoes. You see my tomato garden back there. See all the tomatoes? See the framework I built all for that? But um, the, the, the aphids aren't a problem to any other plant. They're only attacking my, my, uh, my pepper plants. And so, I, I, again, I don't know what to do. All these pepper plants, these, these plants were all loaded with peppers and everything. I have to bring them out here, and now they're getting sun shock and scalding because they were growing under my greenhouse, you know. And, and it's just the development, new flower development and new fruit development suddenly going through a shock phase. That means I'm going to lose two to three weeks of growth. I, by the time I'm done, I'm not going to get nothing. So my peppers this year, I got wasted out for the most part. And... Um, uh, this is all as a result of having what's known as super aphids, or at least that's what how I'm coining it. It's the super aphids. Once these aphids evolve because of environmental conditions, you know, just not being controlled enough. It, the, the, it, eventually what happens is when you bring these aphids indoors, they just eventually, they're just going to evolve. If you don't get that under control, no matter what it is, whether it's aphids, spider mites, I don't care what kind of insect it is, even fleas or anything like that. 
if you change your natural environment artificially, eventually they adapt it to the new environment and it, it, their offspring it records it and eventually you're going to have an, a, a plague that's going to break out that you're not going to have any control of. And this can happen with any insect. So if you're having an insect problem, you need to deal with it. And you need to, you need to deal with it relatively pretty smartly. Like I didn't really think that it was a problem like this i just spray the aphids indoors kill them and, but by doing that i created a new kind of aphid and it, it, they're they're like a disease resi they're like a they're like a um not a disease resistant they're a, they're a treatment resistant variety of aphid now that you can't kill the only thing that kills it is natural sunlight and regular predators outside they don't seem to survive through that very well so if, as long as if you can bring your plants outdoors and you can, you know, you'll be fine. But as soon as you put them inside of a greenhouse or bring them indoors, you're going to have a problem. So if you're having problems with aphids indoors now, listen to what I'm telling you and, uh, you know, you may want to deal with that. But, yeah, I don't want to rant about that anymore. I'm just kind of just showing you around some of the stuff that's going on. You can see all these tomato plants that are growing here. Look at that. Those are all uh, volunteers that are coming up. These are probably more than likely um, um, Everglade tomatoes. They pop up all around my yard everywhere. I mean, you could even see I even have over here. Where is it? There's somewhere right there. I'm not sure. if I can't see what's, what you're seeing on the, on the uh, lens. But right there, that is a uh, tomatillos. They're coming up wild all around my property. I grew them one year, and they just come up every, every, everywhere, every random places. Like it'll show up here, and it'll show up there. I also have an over happen over here. I let this go fallow with this area. I don't mow it or nothing. Just let the weeds grow. And uh, look, got wild hairy tomatoes coming up on their own. I'm not even sure how they got in here. I don't know if I if I spread them there or wash some stuff out over there, but they're showing up over there. I got tomato plants coming up around the other side of my house. <laughs> I have, uh, you can see, I let it grow. I, I don't rip it down. Like over here, you know, where I process my seeds, you can see my, my tomato plants are coming up in between my cracks in my sidewalk. I just let them grow. I don't care. I'm not going to get much seed out of it. Parsley. You can see I got parsley coming up here. I had to cut this tree down, which I'm not done. I still got to I got to get a good chainsaw to cut, cut that stump out of there. You can see what it did to my my sidewalk here. It split the whole sidewalk on freaking tree, right? I planted it too close. I didn't think it would do that. And it shot a root out. That tree shot a root out straight up here, going right into my house. That tree had to come right down. It literally, this root is probably very close to my house right now. So we took that sucker down. We're gonna take this one down next year. This maple. This one's gonna. It's already starting to split my driveway up. See right here. Let me see. Let me see if you can see that. You see that crack forming? Yeah, that's from the root from this thing. It's gonna do the same thing. Down you go. Um. But yeah, it's uh. There's a lot going on here. I just wanted to rant to you a little bit about some of my tomato varieties, which are doing really, really amazing this year. Um, also, too, I wanted to show you this thing. This is the uh, Sweet Splash Electra, I think it's called. Sweet Sweet Splash Electra. This is a variegated potato leaf variety. I got this one from Heritage Seed. And what an amazing variety. It just started yellowing now, and it's just starting to get blight, but it pretty much stayed strong through most of the year and uh it's got fruit on it but it's not a heavy fruiting variety it's not not as heavy as the other ones it's got tomatoes on it but not that not as many as some of these other tomato varieties i, I thought it would put out more tomatoes but you know it's got tomatoes on there another problem i've been having too this year with um you know tomatoes and issues is i got this little caterpillar from a moth it makes this little tiny little moth right and what these moths do is they go onto the leaf and then they take the leaf and they curl it up and then they sit there and they eat off the, the juice of the leaf and they they, eat, they don't damage necessarily the fruit but they definitely start damaging and these things can be by the hundreds 
and and they they just curl up your leaves and they destroy your leaves and and um, and they do eat the fruit. Eventually, they they drill a hole into the tomato and then they ruin the fruit that way. Yeah, and I've had a, several fruits destroyed because of these. Well, not totally destroyed because they don't go into the middle of the tomato, but they ruin it. You know, I mean, I don't even want to take pictures of it because it's ruined, but it's it's unbelievable. Uh, these little moths that are coming in and and um, you know, and they're just they're just damaging everything. I don't know what these moths are. I've never seen them before. They just suddenly come in here, and it's like, and they make this little tiny little caterpillar. It's like a li it's like it's probably. I've, there's a name for it. They're called um, they're called pinworms. If go look up online, go, go. That's what it's called. They're called pinworms. They're actually little caterpillars, and what they do is they curl up your leaves. If you start to see those on your on your plants, you better start to deal with that because that's what I did. I started removing all the leaves where I see these pinworms, and it seems like I'm getting a pretty good handle. But at one point, I started seeing them flying. You know, the moths would come in like by a cl like the cloud load, and they'd come in and they'd sweep into the plant. And there'd be like millions of these things. So I'd spray them, and then I'd remove the leaves, and you know, successfully, I'm able to save the plants but yeah if you see these pinworms deal with them don't don't leave them they, they say that these can be a real problem from what i've read about them so yeah if you see pinworms um definitely deal with them anyway guys that's just a little bit of a rant for me just kind of showing you what's going on around here just been, guys i've been absolutely inundated with these tomatoes this year more more tomatoes than i than i normally i'm used to dealing with i mean this is a lot every day i'm dealing with this look at this Look at this. This is just like an absolute time. I'll take a. I'm gonna kind of maybe tighten it up a little bit, and I'll I'll make a um, I'll make a what do you call that? A thumbnail for this thing. I'll turn this into a thumbnail. But man, these tomatoes, guys. <laughs> I mean, I got so many of them. Look at this thing. I think this is called the. Um, and I literally have to process these every day because one day you don't process them, they're rotting, and the fruit flies get in there and destroy your. Food. Yeah, I could get the seed out of it, but then my food, I want sauce. I don't want, I want to eat these things, man. You see how, to, what the rain's been doing? It's been splitting my, and, and, and not just the rain is doing that. The humidity's actually causing these to split. It's been so humid lately. They're splitting because of the humidity. But look at this. So this is from the dwarf tomato variety. I think this is called dwarf saucy Mary. Saucy Mary, yeah, dwarf saucy Mary. Look at the size of guys. This is abnormal. I don't think they're supposed to get this big. Man, it's got to be close to a pound, some of these. I mean, this is normally what you get off of them. This is the larger size. And, like, last year I was pulling them off, like, around that. And it's a green tomato. But, man, these are these these things that are coming off of here. It's like, holy, this, you know what this looks like? That looks like a uh, a mango, right? Doesn't, this, doesn't these look like mangoes? Look at this. If I told you that was a tomato, you'd be like, no, it's not some mango. It's a striped mango. <laughs> anyway, guys. What I'll do is, uh, any updates coming in or any anything interesting to film, I'll do some videos on it and uh, I'll, I'll upload it. I know, I know it's fatiguing for a lot of people to watch, um, you know, me doing tomato reviews, which aren't the most exciting thing in the world to watch problem is is that those tomato reviews i specifically make those videos for the website and um so when people are buying seeds they could watch the video and then determine if that's something that they're looking for it's not really meant to be entertaining or anything it's just strictly for the information um i am trying to crunch the time on those down to like five minutes if possible it's really hard to do but um yeah, I know it's fatiguing just to be able to watch that. So I will shoot some other video of some of the other stuff that's going on around here. Tomato plants, you know, garden videos, things like this. I'll maybe do some walk-arounds or something and then, uh, you know, give you an idea what's going on around the garden. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're having a good garden this year. Hope you guys are doing uh, really good in your own gardens. And uh, if not, there's always next year. It depends on the season, depends on the year. Um, but you'll you'll get you'll get a good year for you. This happened to be a good year for me. That where I, obviously the tomatoes are doing really good. But you know, just keep your head up, and uh, hopefully you are doing good. So, anyway, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.